Good evening and welcome to the news on Canal Do English. I am Ellie Smith. The headlines. More security across the Gulf of Guinea as the military operation Obangami 2017 has been launched. Henceforth, promoters of small and medium-sized enterprises in Cameroon will have easy access to information and financial assistance. The documents were presented today in Yaoundé. Those were the headlines. We will be beginning this news tonight straight in the northwest uh, regional capital of Bamenda where gendarmes in the city of the regional capital of the northwest region are currently interrogating two men caught this morning with two human heads and bones at the outlet of the town as they were riding on a motorbike to Fumban in the west region. The two young men say they dug into two graves in one of the villages in Bengui Momo Division and scoped out the human parts. Authorities in the East region are bent at fighting against the sale of roadside drugs which are dangerous to human health. A large consignment worth millions of francs was seized and destroyed in Baturi today. Gladys Ambo Dibang has more. These illicit drugs were seized from roadside vendors in Garwabulai and set ablaze in Betwa by a commission for the fight against roadside drugs. The consignment has been estimated to cost at least 31 million francs CFE. The legislator has the there are processes through which drugs have to be administered to patients. Uh, administered it has to be prescribed by a doctor or a nurse and brought from a pharmacy. They were trained for that to ensure the administration of drugs and treatment are done following the norms. These drugs that have been destroyed are poisonous. During the operation that was also carried out in Baturi by the Commission for the Fight Against Roadside Drugs and the SDO for the Kadei, Halfa Emmanuel, another large consignment was seized and included expired products supplied to the East Regional Fund for the Promotion of Health by the United Nations High Commission for Refugees and the Red Cross. The network of illicit drug dealers was dismantled in the town of Batoum with the support of the SDO for the Kadi and in Garwabulai with the assistance of the divisional officers. These drugs have been estimated to cost 21 million francs CFE. Most of the drugs seized are generics and it could be harmful. It could be harmful to our population. Drugs which are expected to be sold only in pharmacies are now found in every street corner and are dangerous to health. I guess for those who know East region properly, they may have done the rectification themselves. We're not in Baturi, but in Betwa. And back here in the center region, where we have the, pri the public private partnership against malaria is making positive strides. Some company employees trained by Malaria No More and the Ministry of Public Health today held their first 2017 evaluation meeting. For more, Annette Ifeti Esome. Despite progress made, malaria still is a major public health problem in Cameroon. Thanks to public-private partnership, the malaria fight at the level of some companies is making strides after training on this. You know, starting from nowhere and then you can see that they are having some results like uh, number of cases of malaria that are reducing, you know, number of days of absenteeism that are reducing. It's, a, it's something that should be encouraged, you know. Is not to, to, it's not something to be taken for granted because, you know, the, those private sec sector companies are focused mainly on, you know, what they can gain. The first follow-up action plan against malaria 
for 2017 held in Douala with these companies exchanging ideas on their different activities and some of the difficulties they encounter. So the CDC takes care of its workers and its dependents up to the age of 21. So we have a big burden. We have a population um, a workforce of about 22,000. So imagine with the workers and dependents, it goes up to 100 and something thousand of people we have to take care and we take care of everything. Malaria remains the first cause of absenteeism at workplace, causes major economic setbacks as it slows down productivity. A patient can spend up to 50,000 francs in hospital treating severe malaria. We are trying to put in a lot of efforts to do prevention, since it's cheaper doing prevention than treatment. So we are putting in a lot of efforts to do more of prevention to reduce the number of cases of malaria and the number of um, absenteeism from work. This public-private partnership between Malaria No More and the National Malaria Control Program makes sure principles are respected for a successful fight against malaria. The Gulf of Guinea is still threatened by constant pirate attacks and the illicit trafficking of goods. And countries around the Gulf of Guinea, including Cameroon, have embarked on a military training program dubbed Obangema Express. The training offered by the United States is aimed at improving security within the Gulf of Guinea and also guaranteeing the economic security and stabilities of the countries within the region. Demorin has more. It is common to find military ships and boats like these ones patrolling waters around the Gulf of Guinea. Despite their presence, piracy, illegal trafficking of goods, and maritime insecurity continue to affect the economies of countries around the Gulf of Guinea. The security threats, um, typically, what my understanding is more, uh, um, you know, you've got people who are illegally fishing, and so you want to make sure that you're uh, resol resolving those issues, uh, trafficking in persons, things of those uh, concerns. Governments have been addressing this problem through a program job Obangene Express Exercise. Yet the United States is committed to helping Cameroon and its neighbors secure its waters at the Gulf of Guinea. These in addition, innovations have been introduced. The particularity of the exercise for this year is that uh, we do not need to have the task force here in a country, in a particular country. We, each country has to stay in its place, in its, in its area of responsibility and uh, watch as he often watch and if there's an event he has to react. We continue to work on ensuring that there is interoperability among the nations so that any issues that deal up in the Gulf of Guinea the nations can speak with each other and work more effectively with each other. Fonkwa Amba Sivesh is a superior officer in charge of Zone D. He explains how the operations will take place. Exercise began in 2010 and in 2010 we just had three ships under the, uh, under the operational control of the CMC Zone D and uh, American partners with European partners and we had to enroll that exercise in Cameroon waters and uh, we were not uh, a lot. Five years later we had uh, some countries who joined the exercise and the official launching of a Bangene Express Exercise 2017 is presided at by the representative of the commander of the second combined military region, Jean Calvin Leng. The program will help Cameroon military forces use technology to identify pirates and coastal bandits and to stop acts of aggression before the attackers reach their targets. Perhaps the United States will have to take off or leave from offshore security assistance and training and come a bit on land. They are doing that already with the help offered to the Cameroonian armed forces to fight against insecurity in the greater north of Cameroon. But I think maybe in the east they can be of some help because if it is not the problem of illegal 
drugs in Betua. It is the problem of armed robbery in Baturi. And this time around, the senior divisional officer for the KDE has given firm instruction to the prefect there that the commercial bike riders have the sector needs a reorganization. Why? Because no day passes by where no day passes by in Baturi without hearing that someone has either been kidnapped or violently attacked by heavily armed men. And this time around, why is it that the Kadei prefect has given such an instruction to reorganize the commercial bike riders in that town? Gladys Ambo Dibang has more. The level of insecurity in Baturi in the east region of Cameroon is alarming and preoccupying. Within one month, several cases of attacks have been recorded with the letters being the abduction of Justin Makandop, chief executive officer of STBK, a forestry company in the locality. According to reports, the victim was attacked by heavily armed men earlier this week as he was returning home from work. The hoodlums reportedly forced their way into his compound when the gate man flung open the gates for him. After failing in their attempts to collect money from the director, they wicked him off with his house hubs to an unknown destination and demanded a ransom for their release. It was, however, revealed that the man boggled his office and probably made away with a large sum of money before releasing the hostages as later. According to the SDO for the KDE, Halfa Emmanuel, security measures have been taken to track down the hoodlums. It should be noted that commercial motorbikes have always been accused of facilitating crime in Baturi due to lack of proper organization and the infiltration of Central African refugees in the sector. The SDO has to that effect instructed the mayor of Baturi to immediately put order in the sector. What we don't know is whether the chief executive kidnapped has been released or whether any ransom was paid. For some time now, the people or those who are in the private sector, especially in the small and medium-sized enterprises, have been complaining that to start a business in Cameroon is like a camel passing through the eye of a needle. But that seems to be something of the past. If the documentation presented today is any, is any reason to believe or could go by. For more on what has changed and if smiles will come on the faces of small and medium-sized enterprise promoters, Clarkson Tabby has more. And medium-sized enterprises promotion agency has this Thursday presented to the public and the press a reference document that will help better orientate promoters of small and medium-sized enterprises to search for financial support. On how to go about the quest for financial assistance, officials at the medium-sized agency have this to see. You have this, uh, our traditional banks, you have commercial banks, you have uh, uh, micro-financial institutions, and you have uh, pro projects from uh, various ministries, and even some projects from, uh, uh, so that is, cooperation uh, institutions. Uh, so for each of these things, you are given the conditions, how do you accede to the support given by the institution? How do you proceed to, to, to benefit from the, the institution, to, to take advantage of the, the opportunities given by the institution in terms of financial support? To the Director General of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Promotion Agency, the publication of these documents are very timely. This uh, report, uh, book is to solve the problem of lack of information. You also know that uh, lots of uh, SME faces the problem of information. So that this, we come up this document to reduce this uh, lack of information. The books are sold at 3,000 francs, 1,000 francs, and video CDs are also available at a sum of 5,000 francs CFA. The books can be purchased in all small and medium-sized enterprises centers across the country. 
Back here in Douala, students from some secondary schools in Douala, littoral region, have been drilled on the need to protect the planet. The initiative from the Worldwide Fund for Nature, in collaboration with Roger Miller's Curd Africa Foundation, is to fight against global warming. But before we be bringing you that full news in our subsequent newscast, today we received in the program the forum the National Director of the Worldwide Fund for Nature, Mr. Hansen G40, to explain to us a campaign in, that they have launched, which is, as they say, Earth R. What, it, what is it all about? Let's listen to, let's watch an excerpt of the interview that Mr. Hansen G40 granted to us this afternoon. The good of WWF or Roger Miller mm -hmm. is for your own good if the environment is clean. And this year in particular, the focus is on climate change. The, everybody knows that climate change is here. No, nobody will, everybody will tell you that it's becoming very hot. Everybody will tell you that in villages, in most of our towns and villages, the rivers are drying up. It, you don't need somebody to come from space to come and tell you that. So it's, we are just telling people that these things you are seeing and you cannot explain is due to climate change. Exactly so. Climate change is real. The Christian Library in Cameroon has been enriched with one more book, The Service in the Church, by Professor Samuel Henje Toya, if, who is by Professor Samuel Henji Toya. The book was launched yesterday in the presence of hundreds of Christians. One of them was our reporter, Tabby Claxon. They really came in their numbers. Christians of the Eglise Evangelique du Cameroon, the Longcac branch. They came to effectively take part in the book launch titled The Service in the Church. Written by Professor Samuel N. J. Toya, the book of 332 pages highlights what a good Christian should do to reinforce his or her faith in church and vis-a-vis -vis the Almighty God. To some of the Christians present, the book, the service in the church, will strengthen the spiritual life of Christians. It's written about uh, church elders and counselors. Uh, just because elections have been have taken place in our church, and uh, uh, for the new mandate, which has already started, we want these new elders and new counselors to be really trained and to be prepared for the ministry that is. Uh, that is, uh, that is for them. That's why that book has been produced and written. A copy of the book is sold at 15,000 francs CFA and as to the price considered exorbitant, the author has this to see. We want to boost people, uh, people who are really involved in the church activities, not only uh, counselors or um, elders, but the whole family of God really to take deeply into account the ministry which is uh, their own. Gospel songs and some entertainment characterize the book, the book launching. It is good to know that Tabby Claxon is a real practicing Christian. It is on that note that we will be putting an end to our news tonight. And in the state in which we are today, every day that we are free, we have to thank God. Tomorrow is another day, God willing.